morning. Good morning, everybody. Got a few minutes. Good morning. All right, I'm gonna try yet another way of um, broadcasting here today. I'm gonna see which one um, works the best. Here, test another one. Maybe the delay won't be quite as long um, and uh, throw me off. So bear with this this morning again. Good morning. I hope everybody had a uh, nice evening. Thank you this morning, Miss. Thank you, Miss Kathy. I had to hide a lot of um, tiredness, but uh, we're good. I had to go home and uh, work on this presentation while we were here late last night because I had to um, finish a few things up. We had to get that big shipment of batting out on the floor. Um, so that everybody could get their quilts, we could get batting in the quilts and things that were being held. So um, we came back after dinner and worked for a few hours. I needed to finish up the step outs for Accu Quilters this morning, and I needed to finish um, the presentation that I have for here for you today. So um, and then I went home, <laughs> and I had to. I started a training that I have to do for Bernina, um, the wee hours of the morning. We want to talk about if you're not tired, let's just put on an online training and you'll be asleep in five minutes. Trust me. Let's just hope maybe some of that sunk in via osmosis as it played while I had my eyes shut. But that's okay. I'll watch it again today. <laughs> Hopefully I can stay awake this time. All right. Good morning, everybody. So today we're going to um, spend a little bit of the morning. Let me turn the dehumidifier off. No, sorry. Turn that dehumidifier off. We're going to um, learn about English paper piecing, or what is better known as um, EPP, which is what you'll probably hear me refer to it as here. And we're going to go over the who, the what, the when, the where, the why, and the how uh, this morning on English paper piecing. Yes, Miss Tracy, coffee, lots of coffee. Unfortunately, I don't drink coffee. Um, I'm a, a really bad Dr. Pepper drinker. So um, I will hold off on my water until I can get till this afternoon. And then I will um, get my one cup of caffeine, Dr. Pepper, this afternoon. I didn't say it would be a little cup, but you see me with a McDonald's cup, that's usually what's in it. McDonald's, Chick-fil-A, <laughs> wherever I can get it. So, <clears throat> all right. Suzanne, no, it's not here. That helps the telephone. The, um, yes, exciting, exciting stuff this morning. All sorts of stuff. Um, yeah. All right, let's learn about English paper piecing this morning here. We're gonna see if everything cooperates. So what, what is it? So all of the images that you're going to see on the slides here this morning are all English paper pieced um, projects and things along that line. So just, um, they're all images that were found on Pinterest and Instagram and Google and all of that. So I don't know what fabric it is. I don't know what pattern most of them are. Um, I can't help you there, but we can certainly recreate it in some way or another. So English paper piecing, typically called EPP, is a method of using, um, taking fabric, wrapping it around a heavy paper shape, and then you sew the pieces together by hand 
okay, to create very intricately pieced designs. Typically designs that you probably would not attempt um, by sewing machine, okay? These would be traditionally done um, hand pieced. Uh, it is excellent accuracy, precision piecing, okay? It is not the same as what you hear as foundation piecing. Foundation piecing um, is generally done by sewing machine. We also refer to it um, as paper piecing. We use a paper muslin sort of foundation to sew to. Um, with EPP, that paper that we're wrapping the shape around to help hold the shape actually will be removed from this project. It's, we don't actually sew to the paper. So that's just um, a couple of differences. So yeah, I lost you at hand. I know that's a four letter word for many of us, but in the last few years, I actually kind of enjoy it. Now I didn't say that I have a lot. I probably have about three things that I've ever English paper pieced. Um, two of which I can't locate this morning. No surprise there, right? Um, they were, um, I, that was the other thing I did last night, tore my house apart looking for one of those two things. I knew the other one was here at the store and I, I'm not even just gonna, I'm not even gonna go try to find it right now. So um, I don't have many, but I do, cause I, I'm typically here. I don't do a lot of traveling um, in that aspect, but it is kind of relaxing to do. So who created it? Where did English paper piecing come from? Okay. Um, it is originated in England uh, called mosaic or honeycomb patchwork um, in the 1700s. It kind of became popular in the United States and that's where we added and coined the phrase English paper piecing. Your most common and popular shape in EPP is going to be the hexagon. And the most recognizable project um, from it is going to be uh, grandmother's flower gardens, okay? Which really became super popular in the 20s and 30s. So it's not something new. It's been around a long time. It's just really in the last few years has um, come back um, into popularity, okay? We've taken it in um, that older um, skill technique. We usually typically see it in, you know, scrap fabrics, 1930s, 1920s, and we brought them into um, our modern quilters have taken it and really um, used brighter fabrics. And, and we use a lot of um, fussy cutting and things like that to really add interest to the actual project. Why do you want to do this? So I can tell you that the item on the right-hand side of this uh, slide is Tula Pink, okay? That is Tula Pink's fabrics. Um, and I believe that's the beginning of the Tula Pink Nova um, English paper piecing project, I believe. But you can see um, with that, the fussy cutting that's taking place uh, around the center star with the, um, cat food cans and things along that line. So lots of options. So English paper piecing offers us a way to easily um, put shapes together precisely. You don't need a sewing machine. It's portable. Okay. Now granted, we just do bits and pieces um, at a time, <clears throat> not giant quilts like what you see on the slide. You would be doing sections of this and then putting it together. Air travel, road travel, TV time, things where you just need to sit and keep your hands busy. It's the perfect, you know, to me, it, it doesn't require a lot of brain power. Um, so it's a great way to wind down your day. We do spend a lot of time fussy cutting um, in, like I said, today's modern English paper piecing projects. Um, that give you the ability to create a lot of secondary patterns and some interest. And it's great for scraps because if you're just using uh, small hexagons or smaller shapes, you don't need a lot of yardage um, of particular colors. So the, um, the portability of it is the best. So 
Let's talk about how you do it. Now, I am not an expert, okay? I am, let's just say I took one quick class at a quilt market um, just so I had an idea. I've done a couple of things, but for the most part, I've read some books and watched some tutorials and things along that line. So there's one of, there's a lot of ways to do this. Um, so I'm just going to cover, there's a couple of different stitches. There's a couple of different ways to get your shape around the um, cardboard and that type of thing. So um, like I said, don't take me as the all knowing, and this is the way it has to be done because there are lots and lots of ways um, to do this. And I'm sure that even um, you guys who are maybe already English paper piece um, even have other ways of doing it. So <clears throat> first you have to choose your fabrics and depending upon what you're doing, you need to think about, you know, what type of look you're looking for, uh, strong contrast, you know, you're gonna need lights, medium and darks, where to place all of these different shapes and different colors. Are you using solids? Are you using high contrast prints? Are you using tone on tone? Uh, that type of thing. Are you going to fussy cut? Okay, or are you just going to be um, whatever the shape gets cut, that's where it's gonna get used. And then don't be afraid to try some of those um, more challenging pieces that you have a tendency to stay away from when we would rotary cut and piece by machine like stripes and um, strong angular patterns. A lot of us um, shy away from those when we are machine piecing, but you may find it um, a little bit easier when you're gonna hand piece or English paper piece those particular items. In English paper piecing, a lot of the time we use acrylic templates. And you get an acrylic template that matches the size of the um, shape that you're going to do. And you use that to kind of audition where it's at. You can trace around it and then cut. You can rotary cut around it, that type of thing. You can use a double mirror. So a double mirror is two mirrors taped together. And if you've been in the industry and been quilting a while, you probably have seen one because we used it. Uh, we use it to audition for like stack and wax and what things will look like if they're mitered and so on and so forth without, without having to actually cut and make one. So we can drag that double mirror across fabric and kind of you see what things would look like if you fussy cut something in one particular area to know whether it's gonna look right um, and that type of thing. Once you have your fabrics, you're gonna cut your fabrics. Your acrylic template and your rulers are gonna be fast. AccuQuilt dies are going to be the easiest for cutting your fabrics. Now, they're not going to really allow you, the AccuQuilt die isn't really going to allow you to fussy cut, okay, uh, because you can't obviously see through the die. But you can, with the AccuQuilt dies, you can stack up a few strips, cut six layers at a time. The same with rotary cutting. I probably wouldn't do six layers, but you could do uh, three, three layers with um, a rotary cutter and an acrylic template. And you just have to be careful. Typically I work with a smaller rotary cutter when I'm using the acrylic templates because we're talking like a one inch hexagon. So this giant hexagon with this, you know, this little hexagon with a giant 45 millimeter rotary cutter could be a little scary. Uh, you don't wanna get your fingers in the way. So I typically, um, if I'm gonna rotary cut, I would use like a 28 millimeter rotary cutter. And then you're looking at with that, I think, about up to three layers of fabric you can really accurately cut with that. So you'd work through and cut out your shapes, uh, whether you are um, rotary cutting or AccuQuilt. We do have a new um, AccuQuilt cube that just released this month for cutting the most popular shapes and sizes um, in English paper piecing and it's a one inch hexagon is really where a, a lot of projects revolve around one inch. What's unique about this cube is that it allows you to not only cut the fabric, but there is a die that will also cut the paper. Okay, so you don't have to, you can cut your own papers, you don't have to go out and buy papers that have been cut. There are four shapes so you get the hexagon, you get a half hexagon. You get the triangle, the 60 degree triangle and the diamond 
that all coordinate and would work together. Okay, so you get not only the fabric dye, but you also get the paper dye. And I have, I have a couple um, hexagons cut here this morning that I'll show you. So that kind of allows you to build, there's lots of options in fractured hexagons that you can make with these. And it will save some money in the overall scheme of things if you are constantly buying paper for making hexagons, okay? If hexagons are your only shape and that's really all that you want um, to do, we also have two options of hexagon uh, English paper piecing dies on their own. So on the left here, you have the half inch hexagon. Um, that means that each edge is a half inch. Uh, so the top portion of that die cuts the paper and the lower half portion of the die cuts the fabric. And then you have a one inch hexagon hexagon on the other side. So you have the half and the one. So if only thing you want to do is hexagons and you're not into diamonds and things yet, maybe this is where you want to start um, with your hexagons. Just to cover how you would fussy cut. So in the image on the left, you can kind of see a, um, an acrylic template. With the acrylic template, you can, um, I would, um, put it in place, mark around it. And typically a lot of times I use a wax marker, also known as a China marker, um, then that you would then draw like, for example, that's an owl. So maybe I would on top of my acrylic template, mark the placement of like the, what is the eyeballs of the owl that are built into the wings so that I can make sure that when I move that paper, that acrylic template to the next butterfly um, image, I can make sure that they are lined up exactly um, where it was when I cut the previous one so that you get the real um, repeating kaleidoscope out of it. So that is um, marking your template will be helpful in that. So there's just a couple of ways to put in registration marks and that type of thing when you're fussy cutting. It does take a little longer to fussy cut your shapes, but Oh my goodness, the end result with fussy cutting is amazing. So once you have your um, shapes cut and your papers cut, we need to get the shape, the fabric basted to the paper. And we're going to do that. There's two ways to do it, two schools of thought for the most part. You have glue basting, which is what I'm gonna talk about first. And then you have thread basting. So in glue basting, it's quick, easy. Um, I'm not, I'm a glue baster. It's just what it, to me, it's a little faster than having to sew everything. I use a little bit of a glue stick. This is a washable, um, washable glue stick from a sew line. I carry them here from um, Bowen. That is in a little pin format. So it's got a, a small tip on it. I typically put a little bit of glue on the back of the paper right in the center and then stick it to my fabric so that it doesn't move on me. Um, and then I would basically not at the edge of the paper, but a little bit in from the edge of the paper, I'm gonna draw a small line, okay? And of glue. And then I'm going to fold that piece of fabric or the seam allowance over and let it kind of press it so that it um, holds on to the glue. And then I'm gonna work my way all the way around all the sides of the hexagons or the shapes, and we're going to then attach them to the paper, okay? We wanna make sure that we're not at the edge, the glue isn't at the edge of the paper because we don't wanna be sewing through the glue. And we also wanna make sure that we can easily get this paper out, okay? So we don't want a lot of glue, just a little bit. I use a lot of um, mini wonder clips, okay? Which I'll show you, I'll turn the camera on here in a minute. And I use those to kind of hold, hold the corners over while the glue kind of sets, okay? Miss Kathy, I will get one of the, my uh, markers and I'll show you, I'll bring it over here and I'll show you what it looks like. Um, the ones I, on my desk, my, the China markers, the wax marker that we peel off the top, I usually sign the um, thing with. Daddy, up on my pegboard, it's in one of the cup holders up top there. I have a black, a green, a red one. 
There may even be a white one in there. Okay, sorry, forgot to grab those this morning. So that's glue basting. So it's something very quick, very easy can be done. I, you could do this in a car, a um, little lap board on your desk, on your lap. And it, you know, you don't even have to think or really look at it because you can fold this over and you can feel the edge and um, kind of go with that there. Now, thread basting is basically um, doing the same concept of folding over the fabric, but instead of gluing, we are gonna take and take a strand of thread, we're gonna tie a knot and we're gonna come up through one of the um, intersections where the fabrics fold over each other. And then we'll move to another corner and we'll take a stitch We'll take a stitch, thank you, um, and pick up the next corner where the fabrics fold over and then repeat all the way around this um, particular shape and then knot off at the end, okay? You, you wanna make sure that in doing this, I would still put a dab of glue on the, on the um, template to hold it in place, okay, while you're doing this around. I have a hard time with this and it probably just takes practice at getting it tight enough around the template. So when I'm stitching and moving, I have a tendency to not um, get it quite as tight, but you can see the use of the wonder clips to hold things in place that are there. So I think it just takes a little bit more practice um, in, in getting this, but many people thread based um, their particular um, templates completely up to you. Okay. Now, with assembly, we basically, once you get your um, pieces wrapped around their paper and stabilized, you are going to sew them together, right sides together. We're gonna sew along the edge with a fine line and a fine needle, a fine line, a fine thread and a fine needle. So that thread, I use 80 weight um, cotton from Arfil. Uh, you could use, uh, some people use 60 weight, but since the 80 weight came out, I really prefer 80 weight. There is a line of thread called Invisifil from Wonderfill. It's a hundred weight polyester. It's nice, I like it, but I have a hard time feeling it. Um, it is so fine that I, I just, I mean, I can't get a hold of it. And so I, sh sometimes I struggle with the hundred weight. I love it, but, um, it's so fine. I have, like I said, it's just so fine. It's fabulous, but I struggle at keeping it in the needle because I just, I don't feel it in my fingers. You're it's, you're using single strand, um, we're gonna tie a knot in the end, okay? Quilter's knot or a large knot. Remember it's fine thread, so it takes a couple of extra wraps to get a knot. And then we're going to be taking a stitch. There are two types of stitches that um, we use and uh, whip stitch is one of them. And basically um, you're gonna come through the seam or right at the edge of your hexagon, not through the paper, but right through the folds of the fabric out one side and then come back over and then keep doing it and just whip around the edge all the way to the end, okay? About 15 to 20 stitches an inch, so small, okay? Very close together um, in that aspect. And then when you get to the end, you don't need to tie a knot because you can add the next piece and continue on around. Um, unless you are um, finished or anything like that. But if you still have enough thread, you could open this shape up and then add, start, add the next piece right sides together and continue on around your hexagon or whatever particular unit you are sewing. I have a couple questions. Um, yes, I do have, yes, Miss Kathy, I would like a, I wish they would come up with a slightly smaller glue stick um i'm i'm hoping that they will because i mean the ones today they're a little bit smaller but they are still a little bit on the big end it would be nice to have like a fine tip pen 
um, that was glue. We do carry 80 weight R fill. I only have a few colors at the moment. Um, a couple of neutrals. We have some dark, uh, some red, uh, green, and I have some tans and things that are on order. So I do carry a lot. And typically, I when I'm doing um, English paper piecing, if I just use a neutral thread, um, I don't change my thread color to match. But if you're not if your stitches aren't quite as invisible, then you may want to use thread that matches the color fabric that you are using. Um, some people do use beeswax. Um, I, I don't. Uh, I don't typically cut my th thread long enough um, to, and with the 80 and the 100 weight, I just find it so fine anyway that it really doesn't pick up any beeswax but it's completely up to you, but you could try beeswax. Now, the whip stitch works for any sort of shape, any sort of joining. However, the flat back stitch is going to work best with um, shapes that are curved, okay? They're just, especially ones that set into each other. So basically with a flat back stitch is you leave your projects laying flat and you're just going to stitch like a whip stitch back and forth through those particular seams, um, folded edges, but while keeping both shapes flat. For me, this stitch I have to do on a some sort of work surface. I can't do this in my hand. So I have a, a lap desk that um, I would lay them flat on and do this particular um, quilt. Uh, definitely, this is um, a lot of the stitch that they use in the La Pascuala quilt, which is all English paper pieced um, kind of medallions. Um, a lot, a lot of intricate curved piecing in that particular um, quilt project that's there. Now, <clears throat> when you're finished with your project, it's time to remove the paper, okay? Now, there's lots of ways to remove paper. The way that I find that works best for me is I'm going to spray my project with best press, best press, okay, and iron it until it's dry using steam, okay. That's going to force the hexagons to stay in shape while you remove the paper because literally what we're going to do to remove the paper is we're going to fold up the edge and we're going to pull the paper out. So by steaming it really well, you're really setting in those creases and those seams so that you can unfold, remove the paper, and then put it back. The steam also helps if you're using glue to release the glue, okay, so that you can carefully pull the edges up and then um, fold the edge back down. Once your piece is finished, whether it's a quilt, it's something that you're gonna applique, um, you can hand or machine applique it to a background. You can finish off the edges, and you know, if you're doing a grandmother's flower garden, are you gonna fill in the edges to square it off with the um, half hexagon shapes? Are you just gonna cut them off so you've got half flowers, that type of thing? And then you could quilt it. If it's a um, smaller piece, you know, a lot of us do hexagons, a uh, little hexagon flowers to applique and embellish, you know, maybe pillows or little, um, bags and things like that, you would then uh, either machine applique or hand applique that unit to the background fabric. Okay. And then it would be ready to, then it would be finished. Okay. Now, questions. Okay. And while I change over um, the camera here and show you what things look like, please feel free to answer, ask, que ask questions here. And let me get the camera. Okay. So this here is English paper piece. It's not finished, I will tell you. It was the first thing I ever, ever did when I learned English paper piecing. Um, we won't look at it's not very pretty on the back, but <laughs> it's the things you the things you have to learn in 90 minutes um, is all we all we typically get. 
So you can, um, let me see, let me zoom in here. And okay. So this is, I'll show you the back. See, it's a hot mess. So this was all um, thread based, uh, glue basted basically around and then these corner pieces and there wasn't really a particular seam allowance. These were all uh, hand cut uh, for that particular project. But we then started with, you know, adding in units and joining them together. If you look, you, it's hard to see here, but if you come in, there are some stitches that you can see in certain places where I probably took too big of a stitch or too far apart. Um, and then you can kind of see it, which is fine. It's okay. I am planning to maybe one day put this down to a piece of uh, wool felt. And then I will just either hand applique or machine applique this down to um, a piece of wool felt for like a little candle mat uh, type thing that's on there. Okay. Now, oh, let's get that out. So the question was the marker. This is a China marker, okay? It is, um, it wipes off. So basically you can then take um, a paper towel and wipe it off. It's wax, basically. Uh, ba to get more, we basically peel the paper off. Let me stop saying the word basically. Um, we peel the paper off. So if you have your template, and you want to mark, you know, placement of one particular area of what you're going to um, fussy cut. You could use this to mark lines or locations so that you can get them aligned in the same place um, every time you fussy cut. Okay. They come in a variety of colors and, and things like that, but that is what we call a China marker. Okay. So. This is the a one inch hexagon, okay? This paper was, this was cut with the AccuQuilt cube this morning. So the AccuQuilt cube puts, they punch a hole in the middle of the paper so that you can um, help you get it out. So I put a little bit of glue stick on the back of this so that I can get it um, positioned where I want it. So it will hold onto it while I am prepping it. Now, there are a couple of things that also work. Okay. There's a school of thought too, that you don't need to thread or glue based. Now I'm, I always still glue. And that is using a um, fabric folding solution. Okay. And so there's one from Clover and then there's a, we have one from Acorn Pressing Solutions as well. So basically what you do, stop saying that word um they have a, it has a fine pin on it a fine tip to it and you would um kind of run down right next to not on the paper but next to the paper so that it leaves a line of solution i didn't put glue stick on the back of this like i said i did and then you just fold over, okay? And then if you go and press these, um, they will stay folded over the template and not need to be glued or thread basted um, at all. If this is something you're gonna do right away and use right away, I would totally do it this way. But if I'm gonna just sit and make hexes um, and you know create a little, hexi box, then I would be glue basting. Okay. I just don't think this, to me, it doesn't stay as long as I would want it to stay, but it's great at getting really great um, curves or curves, uh, folds along the edge because you want a nice fold. All right. So glue basting, we're going to come using the edge of the glue pen. We're going to come down about an eighth of an inch and we're going to mark some glue. We're going to fold over the fabric so that the um, fabric just hits the edge of the glue. You 
you can use the mini wonder clips. And you work your way around. Okay, until that shape is wrapped. Okay. So the paper will come out easily um, as long as you don't sew it. Uh, that's there. So when it's when you take it out, we basically unfold the edges and pop it out. Okay, it's pliable and you've sewn it all together. So things aren't going to take on a different shape as you're working to get the paper out. There is a product from Australia and Hel from Miss Helen's Subings. Um, I'm having we're having a harder time right now getting it in the United States. It is um, a fusible hexi, a fusible applique paper. Okay, and it fuses on and it doesn't have to be removed. Okay, so it is it fuses on and we wrap around. It's still stiff enough that you can feel the edge. You wrap around the edge and then you use them just like you would the cardboard, except these don't need to be removed. We used to carry them here in the store in lots of shapes and sizes until they stopped coming in from Australia. So hopefully, I know that she was, I think they were changing manufacturers or something along that lines that I had read. And I just, we haven't had a quilt market for me to see Helen and ask her about it. But it takes some time to remove, but they're really not um, difficult. Paper, I just use cardstock, standard cardstock. Nothing, you don't want anything too thick, but copy paper's not thick enough, okay? So this is standard cardstock. Pick it up in packs at Michael's, AC Moore, Staples, anywhere. Typically we use white. That way if the this cardstock color, if you iron it, spray baste it, you don't want the color to run. I've never had paper run in color, but it would be my luck. Um, I just used blue today so that you guys could see it on the white table, but I would be using white or natural um, these shapes. These are all my shapes from this project. So the um, white or natural color is plenty. And it's not, you know, it's not a thick piece of cardstock. Okay. All right. So. Once you have your um, pieces adhered to the paper, it would be time to sew them together. So we're going to put right sides together and we're going to match the edges. I have my thread. Okay. I have a single strand of thread with a knot tied in the end. Okay. Um, we're going to take a stitch right in the corner, okay, through the folds of the paper, okay? And then I'm just gonna come right back to the other side and I'm just going to keep stitching. See, already unthreaded my needle. <laughs> And I'm going to work my way all the way across this hexagon. Okay. Oh, that's a good idea, Miss Sharon. The annoying mat cards that drop out of the inside of magazines. <laughs> that works. That's a good idea. We used to use telephone books for foundation piecing, so. Um, okay. Um, I you can reuse the papers until they're really no longer holding the shape. To be honest, um, if it's going to depend upon the steaming and things like that. Um, how you use it to get out, if you've sewn into it, that type of thing. Um, so if you're, I would always compare 
a um, I would always compare a um, used one to one that you just freshly cut to make sure that it wasn't skewing. It wasn't, you know, slightly smaller, too big, too small. Doing this on camera is not easy. Okay. So we're gonna pretend like that's sewn together all the way, it's not yet, okay? But if when I got to this point, I could then take I could then take this unit and I could put it right sides together and I could sew this way. And then once that's there, I would just fold this over and then attach it to that side. Or if you're doing um, typically hexagons, you can sew all the way around and then come put the center in. Um, it's completely up to you as to how you do it. When you get to the end, you um, right here. When you get to the end, you just tie a knot like you would uh, just a sewer's knot. So take a loop and then sew through the loop. And then I usually do that a couple of times. Okay, and just to secure it. And then, can't see it. <laughs> comes with practice. But then that that is how you English paper piece. Do I have, let's see, I know I have, I know there's some questions. Um, copy paper, it does work. Uh, it's, I think when you, with copy paper, as you get, for a first project, I would start with cardstock. Um, you can feel it's a little bit more tactile. And then uh, then you could shift to copy paper. It's a little more, copy paper allows you, it's a little more flexible. So you can precision piece and you can kind of squeeze things in, stretch things out, that type of stuff um, as you need. Just like with the, um, the fusible hexes, um, they're a little more forgiving um, because you can kind of squeeze things. Correct. Stitches do not go through the paper. You're only stitching through the fold of the fabric that is wrapped around the paper. Okay. Yes, this bag that I have here, let me get this bag. Up. This is a, um, one, this line of fabric is older. This is Amanda Murphy. It's called from, called my sewing room, I think is what it was. I have the place. My no, this is my sewing room. I know, it looks very similar. Yes, this is the thread caddy bag from by Annie. Okay, it's designed to um, there in the zipper. There is a piece of ultra suede. Yes, um, that you basically it. The bag is designed for people that do handwork. Um, Basically, you take your thread tail out through the piece of ultra suede, and then that way you can thread your needle and just keep pulling the thread and not have to chase the spool around um, and that type of thing. So they just kind of hang out. Um, the tails just kind of hang out in there. So this is the thread caddy from by Annie. I'm pretty sure I don't have the pattern hanging over there right now. Um, it is, it's a, it's a little older. We taught, I don't know, they taught this class, what was it, two, three years ago, ladies? Two and a half, because this was part of the Let's Get Organized with um, the Buy In Let's Get Organized Club that I did, I think, two years ago. All right. That's right. That's right. Too much fun. Too much fun. I know. I'm giving you. I'm giving you one more. One more hobby, but I'm also giving you a way to use scraps, because you know it's a little piece of fabric. You know, if we have a hard time throwing things away, this is little. Let you let you use all every bit of piece of fabric that you have bought. I did. Oh, thank you. That fell out of the bag. Yeah, and the R fill eighty weight is on a wooden spool. Okay, if you're wondering what color it is, because you know, twenty eight is gray, forty is green. 50 is orange, 20, uh, uh, 12 is red, wool is burgundy, 
floss and 80 weight are on wooden spools. There are lots of patterns. Um, I think paperpieces.com is probably the, that's all they do is specialty um, English paper piecing, acrylic templates, fusty cutting templates, things like that. Um, they're probably the best ones um, that do it. It's, um, Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, Kelly picked it up during quarantine. I cut her hexagons for her and got her started. And she's just been making hexagons. It is the perfect thing to do when your machine is in for service. But yes, but Kelly now owns her own AccuQuilt and cuts her own hexagons. So don't ask me to cut your hexagons. <laughs> I will sell you all the tools you need to do them. All right, I think that is everything for you today. I hope you enjoyed a little bit of um, information on um, English paper piecing and maybe we'll give it a try, a little experiment with it. And I hope that you have a great rest of your weekend and the great rest of your day. I will see some of you here in about 45 minutes at the AccuQuilter session on snail strap. So I am gonna let everybody go, finish your cup of coffee. I think I'm gonna go have another piece of pie because you know, why not? Um, I, I told mom, I was like, oh, I'm, I think I'm just gonna have some pie for breakfast. She says, well, it's no different than having a waffle with fruit or a pop tart. I said, well, that's, that's a good way to justify it. So, all right, everybody, thank you so much. And I hope you enjoyed and we'll have a great weekend. I will see you here next Saturday uh, to talk about freestanding lace. Bye everybody.